the video and reread the question if you haven't done so already. This question is a bit of a doozy, so we're going to go through this carefully. The first thing we would need to do is to draw a picture of the situation and then a free body diagram of the object, the, the car that's moving around in the vertical circle. So perhaps not the greatest picture, but here is the car at the top of the vertical circle and we'll go ahead and label the forces that are acting on the car. Perhaps the most obvious force is the force of gravity, which of course is acting downward on the car. We can label that FG. The other force acting on the car is what the question is labeling as FB. It's the force that this so-called boom is exerting on the car. And what's kind of tricky about this question is we don't know the direction that FB is pointing. In fact, that's one of the things that we're being asked to find. So there is a force that we can label as FB. We can perhaps temporarily label it in the positive direction and we will see from our calculations whether that direction is correct. It is possible that if we calculate a negative value for FB that we would in fact have to turn it around and point it downward. For now we'll arbitrarily point it upward and see what the math tells us, so to speak. So let's go ahead and move to the next phase of the problem after we just drew the free body diagram and that is applying Newton's second law to the car. Now of course New Newton's second law looks like the following. We have the sum of the forces acting on the object equaling the product of its mass and acceleration. We've got the two forces labeled on the car so we can use those in the sum of the forces expression. Notice that we used a minus sign in front of FG because once again it was pointing downward and we left FB as a positive quantity because we arbitrarily assigned its direction to upward. We then have the mass multiplied by the acceleration and because this object, this car, is moving in a circle we have a very special type of acceleration and that of course is the centripetal acceleration. So really A in this case should have a little c next to it to indicate the centripetal acceleration of the car. The formula for centripetal acceleration is V squared divided by R. But then we have another key aspect of this question. If we look at the position of the car and remember that centripetal acceleration must always point towards the center of the circle then we would realize that the centripetal acceleration must be negative because towards the center of the circle from this position would be downward in the negative direction. So we have to be very careful about assigning a negative value to the centripetal acceleration. We can rewrite the equation as follows. Basically we just move the negative sign into the front of mv squared over r and then we can go ahead and add fg to both sides so that we can solve for the boom force. At this stage we're ready to go ahead and plug in the values for parts A and B of the problem. The force of gravity was given to us as 5,000 newtons so that will be our FG. The mass was not given but we can find that by remembering that mass is equal to the force of gravity divided by the gravitational constant. So actually we can go ahead and just simply calculate the mass because we'll need it getting a little close to the edge of the screen there, sorry about that, but the mass turns out to be 510.2. So now we'll just plug every known quantity into this equation and we'll find out what the boom force would be for part A. So there is every quantity plugged in and the answer is 3724 newtons. Now notice that because this answer turned out to be positive, the boom force indeed will be pointing in the positive y direction. So our original indication of an upward pointing arrow for the boom force actually turned out to be correct. So part A and B are both solved. We can now move on to parts C and D and this won't be too much more complicated because we already have the expression for the boom force. So all we have to do is substitute in a new value for the velocity v and see what the magnitude and direction of the boom force turns out to be. So let's go ahead and do that. So now the new values are plugged in and the result equals negative 2347 newtons. Now in this case the negative sign indicates that the boom force was actually improperly drawn for parts C and D of the question. It is no longer pointing upward but instead 
downward again because of the negative sign indicating that direction. So for parts C and D, the boom force would have been more appropriately drawn as pointing downward rather than upward.